strikes, accidents happen. Be there when the calls come in. It's back-to-back episodes of Rescue 911, next on Discovery Health Channel. Today on Rescue 911. My son, I never saw him in such pain. Two boys playing with matches get badly burned. You take care of your kids' pains and stuff, but something like that you can't. On Rescue 911. <laughs> are never too young to start learning life-saving techniques. You never know when a child might be the only one around in a moment of crisis. That moment came for 10-year-old Jacob Walsh in a quiet residential neighborhood of Pasadena, Texas, on October 30th, 1988. David Parker will never forget that Sunday morning. He looked at me and said, Daddy, is this a dream? I said, I sure well wished it was. The Parkers and the Walshes had lived next door to each other for years. On this day, like so many others, their sons were playing together in the backyard of David and Kathy Parker's house. I was just kind of walking around the house, drinking my coffee. He and Jacob and Kale were in my backyard on the patio playing. They were playing with the volcano. Her eight-year-old son, Cale's model volcano, had been built with the help of his father as a science project. They pour baking soda in the top of it, and they're supposed to see how it erupts. Next thing I knew, I saw them jump in the fence because Jacob lives next door. They wanted to use Jacob Walsh's skateboard ramp as a platform for the volcano. We just got it and brought it over to my backyard. Just set it on the middle of the ramp. Neither boy was allowed to use matches. We got a match and just put a match in there and burn a leaf. And just burn. The two boys kept trying to get a fire started in the volcano using matches and leaves, while Jacob's grandmother worked just inside the house. I was washing dishes, and I knew they were playing out in the backyard. I mean, they did that all the time. I went out the back door. I just chased after him and rolled him over on the ground. I just stood there. I, I couldn't move. When I was in kindergarten, I remember the stop, drop, and roll. And he wouldn't roll over, so I just rolled him over. If I wouldn't have rolled him over, he'd probably have died. I heard him screaming. He wasn't on fire anymore, but he was standing there telling me, Terry, I'm on fire, I'm on fire. And I told Jacob, I said, uh, run and get David. Jacob ran next door to get Cale's father, David. He couldn't even speak. He was, he was so white. My son, I never saw him in such pain in my life and feel so helpless. I couldn't do nothing for him, really. is terrifying and a mother knows their child's cry <laughs> it was very different kathy's call for help came in at 9 45 a.m number one please state your emergency i said my son is burnt he's in pain i need an ambulance so hurry up get here now that's when they told me to put the water on him, the cold towels 
to try to comfort him. I mean, usually you take care of your kids' pains and stuff, but something like that you can't. Pasadena police officers were on the scene within three minutes. What happened? My heart was going 90 miles an hour. I just didn't want him to be in pain. When he was quiet, I could calm down. But then when he started reacting, I, I reacted with him. Tonight... During the Indy 500 race week, the staff at Wishard Memorial Hospital deals with fast times and furious tragedies. Don't miss a compelling episode of Trauma, Life in the ER, tonight on Discovery Health Channel. And I saw blood, but I saw no head. Every Monday night, Discovery Health Channel will make you cringe, cry, and wonder, how on earth did they survive? The answer is somewhere between the marvels of modern medicine and the pure power of the human spirit. Going up was easy, coming down was easy, a sudden stop that bothered me. Impact Stories of Survival. It's Monday night at 8 on Discovery Health Channel. Paramedics James Kelton and Mark Donovan arrived less than two minutes later. I think when paramedics and EMTs deal with children, Everybody gets a little nervous, a little uptight. You usually deal with adults who can tell you what's wrong and how they're feeling, but when you get children, they're, they're scared and they just want to be with mom or dad. I did notice the unique smell of burned flesh, which if you've never smelled burnt flesh before, it is a very unique scent that you will not soon forget. Burns were concentrated on his legs and I believe his left arm and his left ear and a portion of his neck. It just looked like somebody had come and just peeled away a piece of skin and just exposing what was left down underneath it. We basically made a sandwich out of him using what we call sterile burn sheets. Doused it down completely with sterile water. We felt that that would best serve reducing the pain and put out any fire that may be remaining burning in the skin tissues itself. When they would pour the water on Kale's legs, he was all right for approximately a second to a minute. And then he would just start screaming. I begged them to give him something for pain, and they said that they couldn't. Kale was rushed to a nearby parking lot where a special helicopter landing zone had been set up. I was scared. I thought it was my fault because I poured the gas man in there and I burned him. This one life flight nurse, she hugged me and she said, we'll take good care of him. And they just said that there's no room on the helicopter for me. I felt like dying. I was thinking he's probably terrified. I, I mean, I felt worse not being with them than I did being with them and not being able to help them. The flight to Herman Hospital in Houston took less than 12 minutes. There is no doubt that uh, burn injury is the most devastating type of injury that the human body can sustain. Dr. Donald Parks, a leading burn expert, was waiting to treat Kale. Okay, y'all, this is a nine-year-old. He was in a gasoline explosion. I recall that Kale coped very well. He was panicky, but he did cooperate uh, in all our requests. I noted that he had extensive burns, uh, including burns to his ear, to his back, both arms, and very deep burns to both legs. Many of the burns on his legs uh, were third degree, destroying all the layers of skin. The burns were subsequently cleaned to attempt to prevent contamination of the burn wound, which ultimately could lead to an infection. He was wrapped from head to toe in bandages. He looked like a mummy, and he had tubes everywhere. And he looked up at me and his dad, and he said, am I going to be in trouble for this? Well, at that point, I had to walk out of the room. 
You'd think kids know better. And I know Carol knew better. I know Jacob knew better. But they they think they got things under control, I guess. I think, oh, well, we know it's bad to do this, but, but it, you know, we can... We can play with it and not get hurt. But evidently they, they can't. In the year and a half since Cale Parker was burned, he's undergone a series of painful skin graft operations. Fire Marshal Bill Yearout believes that Cale survived because his friend Jacob acted quickly and knew what to do. When a person catches himself on fire, of course he panics and he's gonna run. The technique of stop, drop, and roll saves lives. And uh, this is uh, the reason that this one boy is here today. Yeah, no stop, drop, and roll, I don't, I don't think I'd be alive right now. I'd just keep on burning. Jacob's mother is proud of her son and grateful to the people who helped prevent a tragedy by teaching stop, drop, and roll. I have to give thanks to our fire department and for the time that they put into these kids at school, you know, the stop, drop, and roll method, if it saves one life, it's worth all the time that those people put into it. I tell other kids never to play with matches or never play with gasoline. Or not to do anything that you know it hurts you unless your parents are there. And all that's over with, I'm just gonna do my best on everything I can do. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real life heroes who save lives.